Hello, in this video tutorial we're going to talk about how to install your first Windows 2022 Active Directory Domain Controller. Before we go to the demonstration, let's talk a little bit about what Active Directory is and what do we need it for. The main purpose of setting up Active Directory is to centralize your authentication, authorization, and security policies. You're going to need to at least set up one domain controller. However, in a production environment, two or more DCs are required to make the network highly available. When promoting your domain controller, you're going to have to make a decision on whether are you trying to establish a brand new forest and root domain? Or are you trying to add an additional domain controller to an existing domain? Or are you trying to create a new domain tree, add a child domain to an existing domain with an established tree? Once you do establish this domain, your other Windows clients and servers will be able to join that domain that you just created. So let's jump into the demonstration and take a look. Okay, so I already have a Windows 2022 server running. It's a virtual machine and I've set it up using VirtualBox. If you need help setting up a virtual machine, please take a look at my playlist with regards to virtualization. In addition, take a look at the how-tos on installing the Windows operating systems. You can find these playlists in my channel. Let's go ahead and begin, but before we do so, let's open up Server Manager and take a look at the condition of our server. Looks like everything is green, however, we may need to set up some local settings. I'm going to click on local server on the left. There's two very important components that we need to take a quick look at. Number one is the computer name, and the other is the IP address of the system. The computer name is very important because once we install Active Directory services, it's almost impossible to set to change that computer name without starting from the beginning. So let's go ahead and change the computer name of this computer. I'm going to click on the computer name link. And of course, this can all be done through the control panel. I'll click on this change button and let's give it a new name. I'm going to call it Server A. Of course, you can call it anything you like to. I hit the OK button and this will require a reboot. So let me close the windows and hit restart now. All right, let me sign back in using the local administrator account. And we'll get server manager back open. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the correct IP configuration is set up. Of course, for this demonstration, we'll do a very simple IP configuration, but make sure you refer to your network diagram um, because you should plan ahead on how you should you are setting up your network. I'm going to click on this Ethernet link, IP version 4, which is currently assigned by DHCP. There is no DHCP on this network, so we're going to go ahead and right click this Ethernet card and hit Properties. Locate IP version 4, click on Properties. And let's go ahead and assign a new static IP address. So for this example, I'm just going to use a simple address 192.168.1.1. And I'll just stick with the prefix of a slash 24, which equals 255.255.255 for my subnet mask. What IP address you choose in subnet mask depends on the network you're placing this domain controller on. That's beyond the scope of this video, so let's go ahead and continue. Now, this domain controller will require DNS services as well. We are going to install DNS as part of this process, so I'm going to point this server to itself using the loopback address, 127.0.0.1. Because this actually is the first server on my network, I don't have any other networking services yet set up yet, including DNS. I will be setting up DNS on this system. So I'm going to point this server to itself using the loopback address of 127.0.0.1. Let's go ahead and click OK and close this. And we can close this window as well too. I'm going to hit the refresh so we can see our changes. So we got the correct name and IP address and we're ready to go. We're going to go ahead and click on the manage and we're going to click on add roles and features. This before you begin page just talks about having a strong administrator password as well as your network settings set up. Of course it's encouraging to make sure you have your security updates updated as well. We're going to skip this page by default so we don't have to see this page in future editions of roles and features. I'm going to hit next. We're going to go with a role-based or feature-based installation. We're going to click Next. 
And of course, we're going to be adding this feature to server A. I'm going to click Next. And we'll be adding the Active Directory Domain Services role. The wizard is recommending we add additional features, which include tools, and we'll say yes, add features. And we'll hit Next. No additional features are required, so we're going to click Next. And the Active Directory Domain Services wizard is recommending that we add additional domain controllers to add additional reliability. And as well, we'll require a DNS server to function on the network. We don't have DNS set up, so we'll actually do that during the promotion of the domain controller. Hit Next. And Install. This process should only take just a few moments. After the process is completed, we will go ahead to the promotion of the domain controller. We have the installation process completed. Now additional configuration is required. If you're ready to proceed, click on the Promote This Server to a Domain Controller link. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, we have three options. We can either add a domain controller to an existing domain, we can create a new domain in an existing forest, adding it to an existing tree, or creating a new tree, or creating the first root domain in our forest. We're choosing option number three, because we don't have Active Directory set up yet. I'm going to choose a root domain name. I'll call this domain.local. The name you choose depends on a variety of factors. You may already have a brand or company set up. And depending on whether you want to use a, an existing domain that you've registered, or you can use the .local domain name in the event that you want to create a private domain name. Again, we'll just use domain.local as an example. I'll click Next. Note here that we will be adding the domain name system server. Do not uncheck this box because we don't have a DNS server on the network. So this will install the additional role for us. Every force requires at least one global catalog server, so you're unable to uncheck this box. In addition, we'll be adding a DSRM password. This password is going to be used in the event that you have a failed domain controller and you'll need to boot up using a special account to run utilities against the Active Directory database. Keep this password in a secure location. Click Next. The wizard was unable to identify a DNS delegation option. That's expected since we don't have DNS installed. Just click Next. Your domain requires a NetBIOS domain name for backward compatibility. Notice that the word domain came up. That's because it took domain from the domain.local hostname. We'll accept that and click Next. For this example, the database, log files, and sysfall is all going to be installed on the C drive. In a production domain environment, you typically want to have separate hard drives for each of these components. Since this is just a test, we're going to go ahead and click Next. You can review your options and click Next. The system is now doing a prerequisite check. The prerequisites check identified two warnings. One has to do with a setting that will either allow or not allow downlevel clients. This is something we'll want to take a look at after the domain is set up. In addition, we have a warning message about a delegation that's missing. Again, that's expected because DNS is not installed yet. Other than that, the prerequisite checks got completed and all the checks passed successfully. We can click Install to continue. During this process, different components will be initiated. DNS gets installed, different admin components get added, and different partitions get created on the domain controller. Now that the process has been completed, the server will need to be rebooted. You can either click close or just wait for the reboot to happen. Now that the server has been rebooted, let's go ahead and sign in. I'm signing in as the domain administrator, and my domain just happens to be called domain.local. So let's put in that password.
Okay, so now server manager is up and running. Just give it a second to kind of settle down. Perfect. So we see it that our DNS and our Active Directory domain services is now green. No issues that are at least being reported at this time. We could proceed by taking a look at our Active Directory environment as well as our DNS environment by using the ADDS admin tools and DNS tools. So I'm going to click on tools and first launch the Active Directory Users and Computers tool. It's also known as ADUC. A -D -U -C. This tool allows us to browse a directory. We can see here our domain.local domain. And when I expand that, I can connect and I can take a quick look at its containers and OUs or organization units. Here's the OU for domain controllers. And you can see here that server A is a member of the domain as a domain controller. Let's go ahead and launch our DNS tool. Here we're connecting to server A, which is our domain controller. It just happens to be running DNS as well. If I expand it, you'll notice that there's some four lookup zones. Two zones have been created during the process of the promotion. The first one, underscore MSDCS, is a Microsoft Domain Controller Services zone. This is where most of all of the domain controller related records are located. You'll find a lot of SRV records in this zone. The records in this zone have been updated by the domain controller automatically. Let's take a look at this domain.local zone. So far everything looks good for Active Directory services and DNS. From this point on, there's some next steps to take. If you want to make sure if you have a highly reliable environment, you'll want to make sure you add an additional domain controller to this domain. Once your domain is set up properly and configured properly, the next steps are to go ahead and create additional user objects join computers to the domain, and start to work on your group policy settings. For now, our Active Directory domain has been configured and set up correctly. We'll take a look at some of the other activities in other videos. That's the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Please take a moment to like, subscribe, and comment below. And we hope to see you again.